What's going on friends and family? My name is Skylant, talk about games and stuff, and I love me some MMOs, and today we're gonna be talking about the top 10 2D MMOs that you can play right now. These are not all free to play, some of them are buy to play, and some of them have varying art styles, okay? So I'm not talking about just 2D as in mechanically like side scrolling, I'm talking about they use 2D graphics, and this is gonna be for people who have potato machines. This is gonna be for people who want a low spec MMO, but still want to participate in an MMO community. Now, speaking of that, I ranked these, or I actually picked these, because there's not actually a proper order to it, but I picked these 10 games as the best games because they are the most relevant. So they're either new and they're 2D and nostalgic with their graphics and they can be run on any machine basically, or because they're old and yet they are still relevant. You know, there's still Twitch streams, there's still, you know, videos being made about them. They still have a community. So tragically, Ultima Online, despite its claim, no, it doesn't really have a population. It's kind of irrelevant, so it's not on the list. But there are going to be some older games on the list that are still at least relevant. So keep that in mind, guys, as we go through here. No proper order to this, but these are the best 10 2D games that I could find. This list took a long time to make, okay? So please give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff if you want some more weird top 10s like this. Absolutely, I have fun doing it and hope you do too. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, opening up the list in no particular order, we're going to be talking about a game called Screeps. Now, Screeps is an open source MMO RTS, and it's actually a real time strategy game. It plays like one because you're constantly amassing your units, and, but you program your units. And it is an MMO game because you are playing in a massive world with multiple people online, obviously, massively multiplayer, and you actually interact with their Screeps. So it is a sandbox game for programmers. Yeah, wherein the core mechanic is the programming of your unit's UI. So they do everything for you. You have to program it and then in real time they do the do. Yeah, you control your colony by writing JavaScript which operates 24-7 in a single persistent world filled by other players on par with you. Now this is a newer game, it came out November 16th, 2016, you can buy it for $15. But keep in mind because of the nature of the game you do have to purchase a subscription because the servers are doing the calculating, you're just doing the programming. All in all though, this is probably the most unique game on the list or maybe possibly for an MMO period. Screeps guys, check it out. Next on the list, we have a 2D MMORPG that probably fits the outline that you're imagining in your brain, just thinking of the, the idea of a 2D MMO. Orrick is an early access game. It was released for August 13th, 2016 in early access, and ever since then, it's been trying to do some weird things. Now, it's kind of a merging of like a very casual and minigame oriented type of MMO, and then at the same time, almost like seemingly, you know, aesthetically and mechanically a lot, it's kind of is reminiscent of Ultima Online, you know, games like that, older games like that. So yeah, it's pretty weird. I mean, they got capture the flag and a couple of other mini games like that. But then you also have, you know, actually like there's dangerous adventures. Apparently there's bosses and there's a lot of PVP focus overall. So yeah, I, I think this is kind of a weird, honestly cheesy mix of a lot of different features. But I mean, hey, if, if you if there's ever a chance to jump into this game, you know, and see what it's like and you join in this small community and help build it and maybe it can shape, you know, into something very unique. I mean, it's already pretty weird, but you know, actually a little bit more specials. Now's a good time, guys. Check out Ori. Next up, we have a game called Tibia. Just a little known game. Yeah, no, this is actually probably your first MMO. Many people start out with like World of Warcraft, RuneScape, maybe Ragnarok, but hey, Tibia is one of those games as well. In fact, it still has about 9,000 players when I just now checked playing currently. So that's a lot more than many modern games, even MMOs. So Tibia, if you haven't heard of it, well, it's one of those older MMORPGs, but it's also one of the few that have really kept up its popularity, similar to RuneScape or maybe World of Warcraft. Warcraft. A lot of games have died down, have dwindled, but even on new media sites like Twitch, Tibia actually still has a pretty good following. And maybe because of those sites, that new social experience that we can have on YouTube and on Twitch streaming, maybe that's why older games that have really stood the test of time are proving themselves all over again today. Next up on the list, we have a game called RPG MO. I don't know if you could have a more basic title than that, but it's kind of like a parody of the genre itself. It's an MMORPG that's tile-based. It's incredibly old looking in a way. It's kind of cheesy, yes, a lot of these 2D games are, but really it's kind of like aware of itself. It's aware that it is a game and it makes you aware of that too. So go into it with a little bit of humor, you're probably gonna have some fun. But RPG MMO, it's a nostalgic MMORPG that reminds maybe of Ultima, maybe of the classic RuneScape. I'm talking about the 2D RuneScape. It's of some older uh, 2D MMOs back in the day even. So yeah, maybe nothing crazy, ridiculous, innovative, but as something of a parody that at the same time somewhat takes itself seriously, it's an interesting game to try out. 
Next on the list, we actually have a twofer. Here we have Wakfu and Dofus. Now, both of these games are going to be somewhat similar. Okay, maybe very similar. That's why they take up the same slot made by the same people. Similar art style and overall same design flaw. They're basically the same game, kind of a little bit. So, Dofus and Wakfu are tactics style MMOs. So, they are MMOs and they are RPGs properly, but they, they play more like a tactical RPG. Something like, I don't know, Final Fantasy Tactics. Just bring that into an online environment that's massively multiplayer and there you go, you got these games. Now, remember that these titles or this universe of games is actually pretty expansive. There's even in Flash animated anime. I dare say anime, but it's not Japanese, it's French. And yeah, there's actually a lot to the world. You know, that's why they have two games to fill it up. And I think there's a lot to these mechanics. Overall, my experience with Wakfu was actually one of difficulty. There was not, I mean, it was it was pretty difficult, of course, to get into the game because it's very weird and different. But also there was a lot of challenge there. I think if you go in with a friend and if you guys both have a lot of patience to read a lot of this charming quest text, I do believe, and absorb yourself into the adorable Flash animated arts, I think you're going to find that the mechanics are actually really deep and, of course, obviously tactical. All right, friends, the next game we're going to talk about is called Illyriad, and I feel like there's just no way I could even properly actually explain what this game has to offer. Basically, it's an MMO strategy game, and in my opinion, aside from Clash of Clans, which offsets some of its complexity with real-time elements, I think Illyriad is the only serious MMO strategy game out there. So if you want RTS-like gameplay, uh, tower defense, stuff like that, you're going to play Clash of Clans and similar games, Dominations, but Illyriad, when it comes to basically like, you know, Game of War and all the other copy-paste type of games out there, Illyriad's the only one that actually takes itself seriously and does things that are actually new and surprising. It actually has strategy, hundreds of units, crafting, player economy, all sorts of different crazy stuff, an actual interactable world, a game that, you know, for an MMO strategy game actually has strategy and actually feels like an MMO, that's Illyriad. And I mean that. Singularly, that is just Illyriad. I honestly don't think any other strategy game out there does it right. And the only one that does anything different is Clash of Clans. So there's that, guys. All right, guys, next up in the list, we have a game called Regalia. It's an early access. You can actually jump in right now and play it for 12 bucks on Steam. Easy does it. Now, it's an MMO sandbox game. It's open world. Yeah, and it's got meal-based character leveling, okay? It's full drop PvP as well. And you're going to see that the aesthetic overall, yeah, it's 2D, obviously, but it's kind of more cartoon, okay? Maybe a lot more cartoon versus its inspiring emulation of Ultima Online. I also think that it has maybe a little bit more in common with a lot of early access survival games, especially since it has meal-based leveling and open PvP obviously. You can actually have land plots and land that you literally own and, you know, protected areas and stuff like that. I think this is probably a pretty good mix of, like, Air Bear-ish gameplay to get people introduced, and obviously the cute little graphics, and then, you know, actually uh, get them into the hardcore gameplay that uh, had made Ultima Online beloved to many. Moving swiftly through the list, we have another Ultima Online inspired game called Wild Terra. Now, the Wild Terra is it's a massively multiplayer life simulation type of game. It is very player driven. Incredibly, it's basically essentially wholly player driven, a set in a medieval world. Now here, everyone's going to be able to find an occupation, maybe, you know, a job of some sort or life skills that appeals to one's inner, you know, avatar, you know, world exploration. There's hunting, crafting, home decorating, even, you know, there's lots of fights and there's castle sieges and of, of course, open world PVP and all that good stuff. Yeah, you start out as just a bare bone survival and then maybe eventually you can become a medieval king. It's a very social game that focuses on a very serious and hardcore niche. If you like that, you're going to enjoy this game. Overall, it's it's a lukewarm reception right now in early access. Can improve 15 bucks. You can jump in again. Very targeted audience. Uh, most of these games are honestly, but if you are part of that targeted audience, I think that Wild Terror doesn't have too much real serious competition. Next on the list, we have Realm of the Bad God. You guys knew this was going to be on the list. Of course, it's one of the most popular MMOs out there. And yes, it is an MMO. I know it looks really arcade and simplistic, but yeah, I mean, you're not wrong, actually. It's an arcade bullet hell. Just like, imagine it instead of it being single player or co-op, it's a full-on open MMO system. Like, the quests are open world, the dungeons are open, even the final raid confrontation with the Mad God, and all everything basically is completely open. You just jump in, jump out, which is an amazing feature for such a light game, for a browser type of game. Also, saying the word light, this is actually a rogue light type of title. It is an action rogue game where, yeah, you, you have dungeons and you have RPG mechanics and everything, gain, acquire loot. And, and stuff and stats, but no, your character can actually die. However, you are rewarded whenever your character dies or whenever you return to the realm because you actually get new classes, just like you would in a roguelite. So yeah, it's a roguelite MMO bullet hell thing. It's weird, it's special, and that's why it's standing the test of time. Please check out Realm of the Mad God if you haven't, if you're one of the few souls that haven't. It's really awesome, and it's a pretty cool game to keep jumping back into every once in a while. I promise.
And lastly, we have Starbreak. I think a lot of you guys just kind of cried out, like thinking, whoa, 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 where's Dungeon Fighter? Where's Maple Story? But I don't think those games are really appropriately MMOs. See, in Starbreak, you actually have full raids, like dozens of players, even more, all actually working together in open dungeons, in these open giant monster fights. And it's crazy, it's hectic. And while Starbreak might actually take a break away from a lot of RPG mechanics and it's really more action, I feel like those other games fit more the definition of an action RPG because they're really just dungeon divers. Or Starbreak, even though it is 2D and it does focus heavily on the action component, it still feels more massively multiplayer, which is why I made the list. Now, if you're worried that maybe the action's a little bit too intense for your machine, don't worry guys, Starbreak is actually, well, being a new game, fairly optimized and it's 2D. It's, it's totally fine, guys. You're gonna have a good time with this game, I promise. Platforming, dungeons, and actually there's a pretty good deal of difficulty. And I think there's a lot of mechanics with these, like I said, you know, it's very action-based. You actually feel that physically as a player playing this game. So not only does it kind of trump those other games in the action RPG department, I think it also just trumps it in the massively multiplayer department, and it's pretty freaking new. So why not jump into Starbreak? That's the end of the list. I worked really hard on this, trying to find these games. Now, this is going to be for people, again, specifically for people who want to play probably on netbooks or something like that. These are weird games. 2D MMOs tends to be a strange niche, and I wanted to really pick the games that I felt were proper MMOs. You know, open dungeons, open worlds, actually fully massively multiplayer, not just dungeon divers, such as Dungeon Fighter and also Maple Story. I wanted that true MMO experience. I think you guys are too. You're looking for that MMO experience, but, you know, maybe on on not quite a proper gaming machine. So that's what this list is for. Hope you guys enjoy. And I think there actually are a few titles in here that even if you do have a gaming or enthusiast build or whatever, they're unique enough to still try out. Either way, guys, I hope you had fun with the video. Hope you have fun with the games. My name's Skylant, and I'll see you in the next one.